Good morning. We want to begin our service today. I'm going to ask if you would stand with us. And um, so thankful you're here today. The Lord's glad you're here today, that you would set aside this time to give Him honor, worship Him this morning, that He's so deserving of. And I want to just uh, go to the Lord in prayer as we begin today. And I share with you that there are many needs and I know that among the body but there are some that are really pressing right now and that's not to leave yours out uh, but it's ones that I'm aware of and they are specifically asking that we would pray and some even as this morning we're texting and saying have the church to pray so that's that's important and we want to do that and be faithful in doing it so we need to remember April Michelle continue to pray for her and uh, lift her up in prayer, uh, have an infection and, and different things going on there that we need to pray for her. Also, uh, Philip and Sharon, we need to pray for them. Continue to lift them up in prayer. Also, Vern Gilbert, uh, going through uh, treatment and would love to be here this morning uh, and just misses not being in church but can't right now, but going to see him soon. We're believing that, and so pray for him. Also need to pray for uh, Ricky. Continue to hold him up in prayer. Lift him up, uh, if you will, with uh, his need and situation. And also this morning, I uh, want to pray for Michelle and uh, in loss of her loved one. And we're holding you up, Michelle, and uh, praying for you today. And also, I want Reba to come this morning because I know that you have all been praying for Tess and Shaler and little Ebb. Okay, and, uh, and we got a report here this morning how God is working on their behalf. So I'm going to have her to share that. Amen. God is faithful. So Monday morning, um, about 11, 11, Tess did give birth to little Eb Meekins. Um, he was 7 pounds, 3 ounces, 20 inches long, breathing on his own. And um, they had a couple days to cuddle and love him, and then it was off to surgery and uh, a lot of y'all that have been keeping up with him on Facebook know that the first 24 to 48 hours was very critical, but we have passed that point. So praise the Lord. Um, I, a lot of you are just asking for tidbits, so I'll let you know he is breathing on his own. They're gradually removing some of the tubes that were placed for surgery for different reasons. Um, I was thrilled yesterday when I saw the picture of him sucking on a pacifier, and I texted her real quick, and she said he was going to town on that thing. And so they're getting, hopefully, uh, getting ready to feed him soon and just gradually wean him off of some of the medicines and the tubes that he's on. This little fellow's going to need a lot of prayer. He's going to be close to Jesus from the very beginning, but we know that Jesus loves the little children. So Tess and Shaler say thank you for the prayers. Please keep remembering them. They're, they're hanging in there, and um, just keep them in your prayers. Praise the Lord. Isn't that good? That should encourage your faith today as we go to the Lord in prayer. Would you agree with me for all these needs as well as yours today and uh, that God to move upon our service today and in our hearts and lives. Father, we do thank you. We give you praise and honor today. We rejoice in this testimony of your goodness. We rejoice in this, in this word today, God, of how you're working, how you're moving, how you are healing. We thank you for that, Lord. And you know the needs, God, that are represented here today. God, you know each one and where they are walking, and we do lift them before you. All the names that were mentioned this morning, God, we bring them today before you, and we do it with confidence, knowing, God, that you hear us, knowing that you are concerned, knowing that you are working, that you are willing, that you are able. You are God. You are faithful. And we, we bring these needs before you, God, with confidence in you and who you are. So, Lord, we ask that you would minister and move as only you can do. We pray for everyone here today, every need in their life, every situation they're in. We are confident today that we do not have to leave this place like we came. Lord, you're able today to minister to our situation, to our life. You're working a work in us. 
You desire to work through us. And God, today we make ourselves available to you. We yield ourselves to your spirit today. We yield ourselves to your moving. We yield ourselves to your word today. God, that it would change us, encourage us, edify, build us up, instruct us, and make us the people you've called us to be. God, you're worthy today. We've come to honor you. We've come to praise you. We've come to put you foremost and first in our life today. And we thank you for blessings. We thank you for benefits. We thank you today in advance for what you are going to do among us and in this service this morning. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. We give you all the praise, all the glory. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. You can be seated this morning. We want to continue to worship Him in our giving. Ask our ushers to come today. Say, wait on you for your tithes and offering as God has blessed you. Dear Lord, I, we're so thankful, Lord, to be gathered here, to Lord, today. Lord, I think about this week, this past week, some, some's got praise reports, some's been disappointed, Lord. It, Lord, the one thing I have learned through this Christian walk is, don't matter the circumstance, Lord, that we come and give you praise anyway. Lord, and we thank you. We thank you. We're so thankful, Lord. Lord, bless this body as they give, Lord, and bless it to your will. Bless both gift and giver. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Gilbert. I'd like to highlight some announcements this morning. You'd see the very first one in your bulletin, very important. It is a welcome and invitation to everyone to Sunday school. I want to invite you to come to Sunday school. We have it for all ages, all uh, different studies going on and taking place, and we want to encourage you, especially as moms and dads, to bring your children for Sunday school to receive the training there, and uh, also for the adults. Different growth groups are going on upstairs, and also Sunday school in here for the adults. So please make it a priority in your life for Sunday school, and you'll be blessed by it. Also, I want to remind you that um, with our guest speaker last night, we did not celebrate communion, but we will be doing that tonight. So come back tonight. Join us for communion, if you will, at 6 o'clock. We'll just have a wonderful time there as we remember and reflect what the Lord has done for us in making a way for salvation. Also, I want to remind you of the trunk or treat. Sean, you want to say anything toward that? You hear Sean? She needs more cars, more helpers. Okay, next Sunday, another update on it. But right now, needing you to sign up to bring your car to be a blessing and outreach to the community, to the young people. So put that on your calendar and also plan on it for October 26th, 4 o'clock to 6 o'clock. Many things are going to be going on out there, and uh, you want to spread the word to be a blessing to the community. For all the young people. Okay, praise the Lord. Will you stand, please, as we enter the throne room and, and just thank the Lord? Lord, I'm so thankful. Lord, I'm so thankful, Lord God, that you, you invite us right into your presence, Lord God. Lord God, to, to just sit at your feet, Lord God, and to just bring things to you, Lord God, in, in complete surrender. Lord God, you didn't tell us to fix it. Lord, you, you don't call us to surrender, and I just praise you. I praise you, Lord God, for your goodness. Lord, for your faithfulness, Lord. Hallelujah. There's a part of this song, and it says, there will be, there will be victory here. And I just can't help but think that maybe there's a situation or two in each of our lives that we need to say there will be victory here. Why? Because we serve a victorious Savior. Because we surrender to Him. Because in His hands, all things are new. He's the Creator. 
He creates solutions. He, he's a restorer, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God. So be lifted high. Be lifted high, Lord. Would we surrender to you? Forever by my side. 
there will be, there will be victory here. There will be, there will be victory. Rosso Shelley, the daughter of Mono Sole de Vietnam. There will be, there will be victory here. There will be Mono Shore. There will be victory here. There will be, there will be victory. Rosso Shelley, the Declare it over your family. Rosso, there will be. There will be victory here. There will rub them on no. There will be victory here. There will be. There will be victory. There will be. There will be. There will be. There will be victory here. There will be. There will be victory. There will be victory. There will be, there will be. Oh, rain, Lord. There will be, there will be victory here. There will be, there will be victory here. There will be, there will be victory. Shake the mountains. Shake the mountains. Break the walls apart, open the heavens, almighty God, you are overcomer, defender of my heart. By your power, by your power, the oceans open wide, your fire falls down, heaven and earth collide, King Jesus, forever by
heaven's angels all around my delight is found in knowing that you wear the victor's crown you're my help you're my help and my defender you're my savior leave them on no shame by your grace i live and breathe to worship you leave them on no shame i live though at the mention of your greatness in your name i will bow down in your presence fear is silent for you wear the victor's crown let your glory fill this temple let your power overflow by your grace i live and breathe to worship you hallelujah happened at our house yesterday. Pierre was playing a little game on a tablet. And from the other room, I heard him hand the tablet to Joel. And he said, Dad, can you win this game for me? And you know, I don't, I don't think that was a really good thing. I know we can't win every game for him, but it was a pretty clear picture of surrender. And it was a pretty it was a really clear picture to me of what my attitude needs to be toward my heavenly father i need to hand the tablet over i need to hand the i need to hand the situation over i need to hand the battle over and say hey can you get me to the next level can you win this one for me i hands off i don't want the victory i don't know what to do i don't have the answer i don't have the skill i don't know what the outcome should be i don't have any direction or where i'm going can you win this one for me maybe it's just me but somebody needs to hand the tablet over somebody needs to hand the tablet over daddy can you win this one for me daddy win this one for me would you just tell him that and you know what the good news is hey he already won shame there's no shame he doesn't expect you to do it by yourself because he already won we're crazy to keep the tablet in our hands we're crazy to keep fighting the game we're crazy he already won he already won you already won you already won Take it, take it, take it. on the shelf, on the shelf. Take it. I can't fight it. I can't solve it. Play the. 
Yeah. 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Church, let's lift our hands and seal that in your spirit this morning. Father, we thank you. We thank you, God, for your truth. We thank you, God, for your promise. We thank you, God, for your gifts and operation. We thank you for your word. We seal it today in our spirit. You are victory. You are God. You are almighty. You are working a work. You are worthy of our praise. And God, today, we do release that tablet. We turn it over to you. That that is larger than our ability, that that is beyond our intellect, that that we cannot do in ourselves, today we release it over to a God that is mighty and it is able. And God, we know you're working all things out for our good to those who are called according to your purpose. We thank you, Lord. We turn it over this morning. We let it go. We give it to you because you are victory. And we thank you, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. Church, praise him. Give him a clap offering. Tell him how thankful you are that he's larger than your situation. Hallelujah. You're bigger than our need. Go ahead and praise him. That isn't enough. Go ahead and praise Him. Go ahead and thank Him. Go ahead and tell Him today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. How great you are. Sing it to Him today. Thank you, Lord. You're the name above every name. How great you are. You're bigger than our need. You're bigger than our problem. You're larger than we are. You're God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Name above every name. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, we believe that. Look to your neighbor and say, I believe that. I believe that. You are more than enough. Hallelujah. You can be seated this morning. Praise God. Children can go to Children's Church today to follow Sister Sean. Would you give her a clap offering of thanks for all she does? All the young children. Father, we pray today your blessings and your strength over them. God, we just ask that you'd move by your spirit upon them. Help Sean today, God, as she teaches and leads these young people. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. Well, I'm thankful that He manifests in presence. Aren't you? Yes, go ahead. Thank the Lord. Praise. Amen. And thank God because we serve a God that is alive this morning. Yes. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Yes, he will. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Praise God. Praise God. God. Praise God. Something inside of me. It's like fire. Burn it out. Burn it out. Let it out. Tell the people I'm here. Hallelujah. I'm here. Hallelujah. I want to bless you. I want to touch you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 
Thank you, Lord. Amen. Praise Amen. God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, in case you didn't know it, you're in a Pentecostal church, okay? And praise God, I'm thankful this morning for that. Hey, Kenny. Yes? This is the first time that I've really had peace. Amen. Praise the Lord. I really felt the word differently today. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The Lord wants to edify and build up and encourage His people. And I believe that's what he is trying to do this morning. And it is up to you and I to receive that, as we've heard this morning, to uh, let go, turn it over to him, and praise God he's able to do that. It is up to us. God has done, and God is doing. And uh, I just want to say this morning, again, to that, I, there's faces in here I do not recognize. We're glad you're here today, but I want to just... Say, maybe you haven't been in a Pentecostal setting before. And maybe you're just saying, well, what just take, took place with a message that was given in a language that is foreign to you? In a message in tongues. I want to say to you, that's very scriptural. I want to say to you, is gifts in operation. And you can look in the book of Corinthians and you'll see that. And the reason that message was given in an unknown tongue, you understand it was also interpreted. And you heard the interpretation. I know, I know many of you understand this, but some may not. It was interpreted. And the interpretation came. It worked together. It's the Spirit of God. And He spoke to us to encourage and build you up. And to strengthen you. And to show you that He is working. So I always want to say to you, uh, we're not offshore. <laughs> we're not out there, okay? That's scriptural. And what took place was God showing you how much He loves you. And He spoke to you through a message in tongues. It was interpreted. It's very scriptural. And I just wanted to encourage you, receive it. Receive it. Uh, enemy's going to try to steal it. Receive it. Take hold of that. God was speaking to build you up. Praise God. I just wanted to say that because we may not always know what's going on. Okay? It weren't in the program. It weren't planned out. That's the Holy Spirit of God manifesting Himself. And as you've heard this morning, He's moving. He's in this inner midst. He's down these aisles. He's in your pew. God is working. The Spirit of God is filled every place here. Every place the Spirit of God is at. And today He wants to touch you. Today He already has touched you. So receive it from Him today. Isn't He good? Aren't you glad you're here today? Isn't God good? Praise God. And He loves you. And He's concerned for you. Praise the Lord. So let's look into the Word this morning. You've heard probably enough to walk in victory the rest of the week. But uh, we're going to go a little further. And maybe we can just put the icing right on top of all that God is doing. With His help, I believe we can. Because I just believe we're in a vein here that He's trying to speak. And I've received confirmation through what's been said this morning. So I want to encourage you, uh, be alert, listen, grab a hold by faith to what you hear today. I want us to look in Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. I've titled this message this morning, How Do You See Yourself? How do you see yourself? Good way to put that. Are you looking out the window or are you looking in the mirror? Think about that. How do you see yourself this morning? Romans chapter 8, verse 31. Let's read this. It'll be on the screen if you didn't bring your Bibles with you. I'm th so thankful. You know, it takes a lot of people. It takes a lot of people to let things happen so today that we can be uh, blessed in our service. And I'm thankful for all those that are using their gifts for the Lord. You'll see on the screen, Romans 8, 31. What then shall we say to these things? We'll mention these things in a minute. But what shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? 
Is it, it is God who justifies. Who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died and furthermore is also risen, who is even in the right hand, at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Praise God. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. For the truth in what we've just read. Father, take your word. Let it run. And let it run clearly. Father, I ask for your anointing on those to receive. And your messenger to deliver. God, help me today to do what I cannot do. And Lord, we ask for spiritual discernment. Discernment to be able to receive the richness of the truth that has been made real to us this morning. I pray everything said and done would lift you up and exalt you for you alone are worthy and we give you the praise. I thank you in advance for what you're going to do through your word. In Jesus' name, amen. We know, church, that in this life there are many difficulties that we face. Every one of us, throughout the word of God, you read where the believers time and time again, had to overcome many obstacles. Many oppressing and opposing forces came against them continually. They had to overcome to ensure victory. The complete biblical library made this statement, and it goes along with this. It said this, he described Romans 8 and 35 as the seven enemies Seven enemies that the Christians throughout all the centuries often had to endure and encounter and, and experience. You see those seven enemies. He says this shall tribulation, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, peril, or the sword. He described them as there that through the centuries they all had to overcome and today still there. And he went on to even describe the life of the Christian. He said we're accounted. He said we're like sheep for the slaughter. Think of that. Describing the believer. Describing you today as sheep. Likened to sheep for the slaughter. But church, I want to say to you today. Do you and are you aware and we're of a certain uh, uh, surety today. Are you confident and see through the word of God that even though they went through all of this, they live triumphantly through it all. Every bit of it, everything, they triumphed over it. And there's one very important factor that I believe that caused them to go over and that will enable you and I to go over today in whether you're going to overcome, in whether you're going to triumph today in your circumstance, in your place today that you're walking that may seem larger than you, bigger than you. It's all about handing that tablet to Him. It is all about turning it over to Him. But listen, uh, one important factor to all of that is this question. How do you see yourself? How do you see yourself as the believer? Do you look at yourself today as a winner or as a loser? Do you see yourself today as a champion, as a conqueror, or do you see yourself today as one who is continually being defeated, over and over again being defeated? Church, when we see this uh, and say that 
that how do you see yourself? I'm not suggesting to you that victory is based on, on you and your human ability. I'm not saying that. It's not based on our human ability. It's not based today on your self-determination, although that plays in it. It's not based on that, and I'm not suggesting that when I say how do you see yourself as a winner or a loser. Church, we know this. Victory comes through Jesus. Victory has been paid for through Jesus. Victory has been made possible through Jesus. As he said, we're more than conquerors through him who loves us. Through him who loves us. But how do you see yourself in him? How do you see yourself this morning through him? How do you see yourself in your spiritual walk today and in this life in which you're living? What does truth say about us? What does the Word of God say about us? Who are you this morning according to truth, according to the Word of God? And Romans 8, 37 says this, Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors. That's what truth says. That's what the Word says. Through Him who loved us. I look this phrase up, more than conquerors. We're more than conquerors. What does that mean in, in the original, in the Greek? More than conquerors translates like this. Super. Above. Over. Over the top. It means beyond. Beyond. Uh, I like this. Not just more than, even more than. Even more than. Paul was telling those believers, this is who you are. I know what you're going through. I know what you're facing right now. All these things. But this is who you are. You're super conquerors. In this life, you're super victors. I like that. Never heard it before. Victors. Today, you're super victors. You're super winners. Not just winners. Super winners. You're beyond overcomers. You're even more than overcomers is what he's saying. You are over. You're above it all. You are beyond a victor. You're a super victor through Him, through Him, in Him, and by Him that loves you. Isn't that good, church? That's who you are when He says you're more than a conqueror. I begin to think of that word conqueror. You know, they very well understood what He meant when He said conqueror. They knew this word conqueror. In that time, the Jews were conquered continually by Rome. They were con conquered and overcome by Rome. They, they, were, they were punishing them. They were governing them. They were controlling them. They were manipulating them. They had their life. They were conquering them on every hand. They knew what it was to conquer and what that word meant. Paul speaking of it even tells you and I. He compared this to warfare. He compared that Roman soldier and the spiritual armor that he wears or his armor to the spiritual armor that you and I must wear if we're going to conquer. He said, you want to conquer. You want to overcome. You want to be a winner. He, they understood the word conquer because of the conquering enemy that was continually around them and was oppressing them on every hand. So they understood what that meant. For you and I today, as Paul looked out there to them, going through tribulation, testing, things beyond them, things larger than them, places that they could not imagine they were walking, he said, you're more than conquerors. You're, you're super winners. You're super victorious. And you know, I imagine they were thinking probably what you're sitting in here thinking today with your situation. You're saying, well, Ken, I, I just don't see it. I just don't feel that. I just don't get that right now in my situation. I don't see myself as more than a conqueror. I don't see myself as over the top, a super victor. I don't see it in my place that I'm walking and what I'm dealing with in life. So this morning, I want to share with you why we are super victors. Why we are more than conquerors. The Lord impressed upon my heart, just spoke to me in, in a very uh, persuasive way. And, and He spoke this and dropped it in my spirit not too long ago. And I really didn't get it all, but it's unfolding. 
And he just kind of dropped this thought into, in my heart and he said this, you know, you can't always understand the how unless you know the why. I said, what? You can't always understand the how unless you back up and really know the why. You see, you can't always understand the how. How am I going to be a winner over what's going on in my life? How am I going to be a super conqueror over what I'm going through this very minute in my life? How am I going to come out and be on top and be this one that you're speaking of? How am I going to do it? And sometimes you can't see and understand the how until you know the why that you are. See, you already are the conqueror. But why are you a conqueror? You already are victorious. But why are you a victorious? Why can you claim that today that I'm a conqueror? And if you know why you are more than a conqueror, you'll soon start to understand how I can understand that I am going to make it through this situation. I am going to come out on top. I am going to climb above it all. But I must know the why that I can claim what I'm claiming. And the first thing is this. Why are you more than a conqueror today? Again, it's not because of you. It's not. You play a part in it. Uh, Rodney was telling me this morning, I know I got to cooperate. Rodney, we do. But listen, I want you to get this. You're more than a conqueror, number one. We are more than a conqueror because God is for us. God is for us. I know that sounds so elementary. I know it sounds so plain. I know it sounds, look, you come to just to tell me that. Listen, I want you to get it and we're going to go a little deeper because the enemy would love for you to believe different. You are more than a conqueror. Why? Because God is for us. Notice the question he asked in verse 31. What shall we say to these things? What are these things that he's talking about? What are these things? Paul has just reminded them of a certainty. He's reminded them of, of a truth, of a blessing that, that is there because of their salvation. And he's talking to them about being in Christ. And he says, because you're in Christ, because you're saved, Here's what he tells him. I want to remind you. These are these things. He said, because of these things. He said, I want to just show you this. He said, I want to remind you because of these things. What things? That God is working all things out for your good right now. You may not believe it. You may not think it. But these things are God right now because of who you are in Christ is working out all things for your good. Not only that, he wanted to remind them that God foreknew you. What you're dealing with right now, no matter what you're going through, God foreknew you. He also wanted to remind them that God predestined. He predestined you to become more like Jesus. That's what it is. He predestined you this very moment. You may feel like the scum of the earth. You may feel like you're never going to make it. But he's reminding them, God foreknew you and predestined you to become more and more and more like Christ Jesus. He's also reminding him that God has called you and that God has justified you just as if you'd never sinned. And God has also glorified you spiritually. Spiritually. He said, that's already done. That's already taken place. So what shall we say in response to all these things is what Paul is saying here. Paul's saying, this is why you can claim I'm more than a conqueror. What shall we say to all these things? And Paul answers them like this. If God be for you, who then can be against you? If God be for you, who can then be against you? One translation says it like this. In view of the fact that God is on my behalf, God is on my side, then what does it matter? What may come against me? God's proven He's on my side. And church, the why in this, why are you super victors? Why are you able to conquer over everything that you're going to face right now in life? It's because God is for 
us. And just to show you how much He's for you, He said, remind them of these things. He has forgiven your sins. No one else could. He has justified you in Christ just as if you've never sinned a day in your life. He has put His Spirit inside of you. And because of that, you can cry out in the midst of what you're going through, Abba, Father, Abba, Father, Abba, Father, out of your spirit being because He lives in there. Today, you're more than a conqueror because He has made you His very own. You are joint heirs with Jesus. Hallelujah. Side by side in Him. Him in you. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Church, Paul says, what shall we say then to all these things that He's already done? If God be for me, who can be against me? I am more than a conqueror. That's the how, the why, so that you can understand the how you're going to make it. It's been done. Hallelujah. 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 We say hallelujah. We say hallelujah to these things. I'm saved. I'm forgiven. I'm justified. Praise God. I belong to Him and Him to me. And I raise up my hallelujah in the midst of the storm that I'm in because if God would do that, He'd do anything. <laughs> Woo! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> you say, what are you trying to say? I'm trying to say your salvation and your future settled because God's for you. Because God's for you. We're more than a conqueror. We're super victor. Because God's for us. I see I'm not going to get very far. I asked a lot of questions. And I said, Lord, I see you for me. Can you imagine? Just, just stop and think for a minute. Imagine. What, would be, what it would be like in your situation right now if God were against you. <laughs> Can you imagine? No hope. Hopeless. If God were against me right now. To encourage you that God's for you, I just want you to see this. You see, we look throughout all the Word of God and we see, church, there were those God was against. And I'm telling you something, I began to think about that and I said, man, their outcome weren't very good. It didn't turn out so well for them. I began to think of Satan himself. Can you imagine? God was against Satan. He was one of the most powerful angels that there was. And he rebelled against God. And God set himself against him. And you know what the result was? When God was against Satan, the one of the most powerful angels, Luke 10 and 18, Jesus himself said, I saw him. <laughs> Woo! I saw him. He said, to them I saw Satan fall, he said, like lightning from heaven when God went against him. I tell you, there's no hope for the one that God's against. I begin to think about those in Noah's day. Think about it. Those in Noah's day, you'll remember, God was against that whole sinful society because they were against Him. So He was against them. In Genesis 6 and 3, He even said, My spirit shall not always strive or abide with man forever. And church, you remember what the result was. He judged them. And he judged them with a flood. And he destroyed them. But the ark rose and floated. Praise God. God was against. I'll tell you, there's no hope for the one that God's against. And then I thought about Pharaoh and Egypt. Think about it this morning. Was the most powerful nation on the earth at that time. Egypt and Pharaoh. And you remember 
the plagues. You remember the plagues and the continual tug of war, the continual competition between Pharaoh and his mighty army and people and God's man Moses that he had placed there. But church, you remember what happened when that competition was over. When that that tug of war was over, you remember, church, all of Egypt was laid barren and Pharaoh's army was on the bottom of the sea. Say, what are you telling me? Church, can you imagine what it would be like right now in the place you're walking if God were against you? I only tell you that to encourage you this morning. It's not so with the born-again Christian. It's not so with the one that he justified, forgave, put his spirit in. How Hallelujah. And Paul says, this is how you know you're more than a conqueror. Because I can say today, absolutely with confidence, if my God who has done all this is for me, who then can be against me? Hallelujah. Look to your neighbor and say, he's for me. Come on, he's for me. He's for me. Praise be to God. Church, aren't you thankful today God's for us? The one who created heaven above and the one who created earth below. Praise God is for me. The one who possesses all power. The one who possesses all authority this morning. The Word of God says is for me. Hallelujah. This morning, He's by your side and no one, no one, no one, no one can stand against Him. Number two. Oh, hallelujah. I don't know what you had, brother. It jumped up here. I'm feeling the same thing. Hallelujah. Listen. Why are you a super victor? God's for you. Why are you a super victor today? Listen. Because God gave His best. Tells me He will not hold back the rest. (laughs) Woo! <laughs> oh, because God's already given me the best, I know without a doubt He's not going to hold back the rest. Look at verse 32. Verse 32. He who did not spare His own Son, but delivered Him up for us all, How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Church, listen, you're more than a conqueror today because he's giving up the best. He's not going to hold back any of the rest. You see, God did not spare or hold back in giving every one of us in here today His very best by giving His only Son. Praise God that when you called on Him, you became a child of God. And that's how much He loves you. But notice verse 32. He says, How shall He not then with Him also freely give us, freely give us, All things. What is he telling us, church? Why are you more than a conqueror? Since he's already given us the greatest part needed, will he not also give us the smaller things? The smaller things that you need right now in your life. I want to ask you, what is it right now that you need him to do in your life? What is the small thing? It's all small to Him. He's done gave you the best thing. What is that thing right now you need Him to do in your life? Is it salvation? Is it healing? Is it deliverance? Is it some form of bondage that He's got you under? Is it a relationship issue? Is it something that He needs to tie together or pull together or work out? What is the thing that you need in your life right now? He's telling us this morning, he who was not reluctant in one bit to care for that major provision that you and I needed, that being salvation, will he not also take care to provide for your every need this morning as his child? That's what makes you a conqueror. He will meet that need for you and I.
Okay. Gilbert, I'm going to use you. Seems like everybody's comfortable using Gilbert. <laughs> Gilbert, help me out here. Okay. So, Gilbert has this piece of property that he's listed and he wants to sell. So I come to Gilbert and I say, okay, Gilbert, I would like to purchase that piece of property from you. <clears throat> and you know how that works. You want to purchase this property, then it's required. It's made in, in the contract. Well, you've got to give a deposit. So most of the time, it's a percentage of the main cost. So, you know, it could be 5%, could be 10%, but you're going to have to give a, a percent. Gilbert says, okay, Kenny, well, you can have it. I want, I want 10%, 10% down. Well, what does that do? If I give him 10%, Gilbert says, well, one thing is letting me know he's serious. He really sees it's non-refundable. I'm giving him 10%, it's non-refundable. And he's letting, it's saying, well, Kenny's really serious about this thing. He's going to give me 10%. He ain't going to get it back. It's also letting you know something else, Gilbert. If I give you 10%, you say, you know what? I don't think he's going to change his mind. Wayne, I don't think you're changing mind, man. That's 10% of this. Security, Wayne. So, Gilbert, you with me? Okay, so Gilbert says, okay, Kenny, here you go. I, want, I, yeah, I got this property to sell. Okay, Gilbert. I want to buy that property. Okay, Kenny, here's the, here's the deal. You've got to give me this percentage down if you want it. So I go over here and I write this check, the deposit. And I hand this deposit to Gilbert. And Gilbert, not 5%, not 10%, but I have written this deposit for 95% of the total of the bill. Wow. That's a deal. <laughs> wow. Wow. I think it's what we're all going to say in a minute. Wow. wow. Listen. Wow. 95%. Now, Gilbert, what are you, what is that, what does that do for you? I hand this thing to you. You run in the house to the Lord. You say, this man's giving me 95% of this bill. What are you going to say to him? Jubilation time. Jubilation time. <laughs> you know what? Gilbert's going to say, you know what? I'm certain. I am certain here. I am 100% confident here that this man is real serious about what he has just done. And here, when I'm really, really certain in this. There is no way whatsoever this man is backing out from that deal. Not going to back out because he's giving 95% to this cause. You say, what does that have to do with this? If God has already given to you and I the 95%, so to speak, He's already given you the very best in giving you Jesus Christ and salvation and all that it affords. Will He in any way? It tells me He's serious about me. It tells me He's serious about you. He's serious about your situation. He's serious about what you're going through. And it tells me one thing for certain. He is not going to renege on this deal. He's not going to back away. He's not going to change his mind whatsoever. He who that began a good work in you is going to see that thing through to the day of completion. Hallelujah. I know who I have believed in and am persuaded. Waited that he is able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. Hallelujah. Did you get it, church, this morning? He who did not withhold the best, he's already delivered on the 95%. He's going to give praise God to your need and your situation. He's working all things for your good this morning. Are you convinced today? Are you sad? You say, that makes me more than a conqueror. You better believe it. You better believe it. You better believe it. You're more than a conqueror today. Thank you, Gilbert. Thank you, Gilbert. Hallelujah. <laughs> well, I know whom I have believed in. No matter what I'm going through, no matter what I'm facing, I am persuaded 
He is able to keep that he committed. He who did not spare the very best, will he not also freely give us all things? Third one. We may not get to fourth one. It's okay. The third one. We're more than conquerors. Why? God's for us. God's for us. We're more than conquerors today because he that did not spare the very best will deliver on all the rest. Makes you that conqueror. And thirdly, we're more than conquerors in whatever we face today because God is the final judge. Amen. Yeah. God's the final judge. Thank you, Jesus. Look at verse 33. Who shall separate us? No, excuse me, 33. Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Amen. Who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died and furthermore is risen, who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us. Notice these words, because I understand many times we don't feel like the conqueror because of this right here. He says, who shall bring a charge? Who's going to bring a charge against the elect? In case you didn't know it, you're the elect. Right? We're the elect. He said, who's going to bring a charge against the elect? Who is it that would bring an accusation against God's chosen ones? Church, we know that one of the main tactics of the enemy is to keep you from knowing your true identity. From knowing who you are in Christ. He doesn't want you to figure all this out. He does not want you to believe this. He does not want you to walk in this for a certain. He doesn't want you to know who you are in Christ. And one of the tools that he uses in keeping you from believing that is his lying accusations. His lying accusations. He constantly is bringing accusations against God's elect. Against God's chosen ones. Do you know in the Hebrew the word Satan? You know what it means? Accuser. Accuser. That's who he is. I think today it would be very accurate if I were to say in this place this morning, in this setting, there is not one of us in here that at some point, at some time, and maybe even this morning, have not had to deal with or heard the loud noise of the enemy's lying accusations, his taunting, his, his uh, condemning Thoughts that want to come and rise up. His hateful words that come to you. The noise of the enemy. Church, that's what he does. He is the accuser. Revelations 12 and 10 says this. Then I heard the loud voice saying in heaven, Now salvation, strength, and the kingdom of God and the power of his Christ have come. Listen, for the accuser of our brethren who accused them before God day and night have been cast down. He's constantly, continually, day and night accusing. And Satan is described here as that accuser of the brethren. And even now, this very moment, the enemy may be continually trying to bring up his lying accusations on someone in here this morning. He's saying such things as remember your past. Remember what you've done in the past. And he brings up his lies. You're never going to measure up. You're never going to make it. You're never going to have any value whatsoever. You're not going to account for anything. You're worthless. You're worthless. You will never make it. Has anybody ever heard that? 
and the lying accusations of the enemy. But church, notice these words and their truth and their words from your Lord and Savior if you've made Him that in your life. He says in verse 33, to all those accusations, He says this, Who shall bring a charge against God elect? It is God. It is God and God alone who justifies. Who is He who condemns? It is Christ who died and furthermore is risen. And He's at the right hand of God this very moment and He's ever living to make intercession for you and I. Church, you understand because we're more than conquerors, we can stand. You can stand against the accusations and the lies of the enemy because we know this God is my final judge not man not what man thinks and surely not what the enemy thinks but God is the final judge there's no grounds whatsoever to the born again believer for charges to be brought up against you the complete biblical library said it like this no forgiven sin can ever be held against the forgiven since God has justified them. If it's been forgiven, it's been forgiven. If it, it will not be held, I said it will not. He said it will not be held against you. It's thrown in a sea of forgetfulness, never more to be remembered, never more to be held against you. God's the judge. No accuser can accuse or bring it up. Satan may try to harass you. He may try to taunt you. He may try to shame you and bring you down continually. But that which and whom God has forgiven will never ever, he will never ever remember it and he will not hold it against you. God alone, God alone is the righteous judge and the enemy will be persistent in trying to do that and taunt you and tear you down. But church, I am so thankful this morning. Praise God, there's one on my side. There's one on your side that this very moment, while the enemy is being very persistent, even as this sermon is going out to you, he's being persistent to accuse and to tear you down and tell you it's not true and tell you it won't, you won't make it. But I want you to hear this. There's one right now even more persistent praise God he died for you he rose again he's sitting at the right hand of the father and this very moment he's interceding on your behalf he's pleading your case he's saying he belongs to me he's mine and he's more than a conqueror he's super victorious and he can make it hallelujah if it doesn't make you happy it does me Hallelujah. Zechariah 3. I'm not going to get to the last one, but I got, I got to give you this. Zechariah 3, 1 through 5. I've shared this, I think, with you before. I want to give you a beautiful picture. Maybe you're really hit hard with the enemy's lying accusations. Notice what's happening here. Zechariah 3, 1 and 5. Then he showed me Joshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord, and Satan standing at the right hand to oppose him. And the Lord said to Satan, The Lord rebuke you, Satan, the Lord who has chosen Jerusalem, rebuke you, is this not a brand plucked from the fire? Now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments and was standing before the angel. Then he answered and spoke to those who stood before him saying, Take away the filthy garments from him. And to him who said, See, I have removed your iniquity from you and I will clothe you with rich robes. And I said, let them put a clean turban on his head. So they put a clean turban on his head and they put the clothes on him and the angel of the Lord stood by him. 
Get a picture with me. If you're being right now taunted by the enemy and he's trying to hold uh, judgment against you and accuse you, look what's happened here. The high priest named Joshua, he's standing in God's presence with filthy garments. He's clothed in filthy garments. Why is he doing that? He's representing the sins of all of Israel. So the priest is in filthy garments because of all the sin of the people. And the bad news is this. Satan is right there. He's there and he's accusing. He's saying, look at him, God. Look at him. He's filthy. He's filthy right now standing before you. He deserves to be struck down. He deserves to be taken out, God. He's filthy before you. But then there's the good news. And the good news is this. God turns to him, Satan. And the word says, he rebukes him. He rebukes him. That means he strongly opposes him. He comes against him. And he puts the accuser in his place. He says, you're not the judge here. You're not the in your right place. You cannot pass sentence whatsoever on my very elect This is Joshua. He belongs to me. He is mine. And you have no right to cast a sentence on him. And church, Satan is continually doing that. He continually accuses day and night. He's pointing out your faults. He's pointing out your failures. He's pointing out your shortcomings. Trying to get you to throw in the towel and to quit. But listen, church, he's demanding that the Lord would just zap you right now because you're less than perfect. There's no one perfect in here. There's no one perfect in this place. I'm not talking to you about living a life of sin and staying in it and making it a practice, but no one is perfect. But the enemy will want to convince you otherwise. But the Lord is standing in the gap for you and He's saying you are more than a conqueror today because I am the final judge and I alone get to judge that one of mine. He's not only declared you're forgiven, He's not only declared that, but He's removed it. He's removed it. Removed what? Your filthy garments. He said in this passage, take off them filthy garments of Joshua and clothe him with my white garment. Clothe him. I'm going to clothe him with my garments. And church, that's what he he said. Put a turban on his head. Praise God. And take off those filthy rags. That's what he's done for you and he will do for anyone that will come to him. And he alone is that judge. Praise God. That's enough. Would you stand with me? Say you left out the best one. You know what it is. That's good. Come back and get it. I'll give it to you in one word. You're more than a conqueror. Because of this. Nothing, 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 nothing can separate you from the love of God. Which is in Christ Jesus. There is nothing that can separate you from the love of God. That is in Christ Jesus. Now, I do have to say this to that. There is a warning there. I wouldn't want you to leave here today. Say, man, he's preached once saved, always saved. No. Nothing can separate you from the love of God. But I want to say this to you. You can choose. You can choose to leave out God in your life. And when you choose to leave out God in your life, then you are separating yourself from salvation. I just want to be clear in that. Nothing can separate. That's why you're more than a conqueror. He loves you. He loves you. He loves you. But you can choose to separate yourself. And when you do that, it's by your own will. Me and Wayne were talking yesterday. Wayne said, we all got a free will. Right, Wayne? It's by your own will. He was making that clear to me. And it's the truth. We can, by our own will, choose. 
But praise God, we don't have to. Praise God, we don't have to today. Because He has given you and I everything we need for a life of godliness. He wants you to be more than a conqueror today. Every head bowed, every eye closed in this place. I don't know everyone. There's faces today I do not know. Would love to meet you. But I want to, I want to just say to you today, you've heard the word that tells you that He loves you and that He's for you and that He wants to live within you. But today this is contingent on have you made Him your Savior? Have you received Him? Have you made Him Lord of your life today? I want to ask you this morning, maybe you're in here and you say, I, I, don't, I haven't made Him my Savior. I've heard you tell me that He loves me. Today He wants you to say you love Him by opening your heart and receiving Him in it. So that today He can make you more than a conqueror. And if you're in here today and you've not done that, we're going to have a time around these altars and I want to encourage you. Come with the saints. Come with the believers today. And just ask Him to come in your heart and life. Receive Him as your Lord and Savior. You may want to say, Brother Kenny, will you pray for me right now? I'd love to pray for you. I don't want to embarrass you. But I'd love to pray for you. If you'd lift your hand today and just say, I want to receive Christ as my Savior. No one is looking and I'll pray for you. Is there anyone today would say, pray for me? I want to make Jesus my Lord and my Savior. I see that hand. Praise God. Is there another? You want to make Jesus Lord of your life? There's another hand. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Another? Anyone today? You say, I want to make Jesus my Savior. Those hands that are lifted, I'm going to pray for you right now. Father, you see this couple. I ask, Lord, lavish your love on them where they see it. Oh, hallelujah. Invade all the lying accusations of the enemy and tear them down. Begin, God, to crumble them. I pray, God, they cry out to you ask you to forgive them and Lord you said you would and cleanse them hallelujah from all unrighteousness praise God you tell him you too this, this morning tell him Lord I need a savior and you're it and I call on you to forgive me and cleanse me of my sin hallelujah and he'll do it and for this church this morning you're in here today I want to ask you how do you see yourself how do you see yourself this morning? Are you a winner or are you a loser? I want to say to you today, you can be a conqueror in Christ Jesus. And whatever you need to come today and talk to the Lord about and seal this word in your heart and your spirit, come against the lies of the enemy. Walk in the truth that God is for you. And know this, there's only one judge. Would you come today and talk with him and meet him? And you two that raised your hand, I want to invite you to come with the brothers and sisters in Christ. Come with the family of God today. I want to pray with you. I promise you somebody will meet you here today. Come on. Praise God. Church, come on today. And you come with them today. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Can you pray this lady? This lady right here. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm gonna pray with you, man. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. Cause the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. Cause the battle belongs to you,